Patrice Jones. Patrice Jones is is co-founder of Vine Sanctuary, an LGBTQ-run farmed animal sanctuary celebrating its 15th year this year. An feminist scholar and writer with 37 years of activist experience in various movements, Patrice has authored numerous texts concerning activist strategy, including most recently the Oxen at the Intersection. Uh, please help me in welcoming my very good friend, Patrice Jones. So much, Steve. Good morning. Um, I am here from a vine sanctuary, from a farm animal sanctuary, yes. And I am here this morning to tell you that Black Lives Matter. I'm here uh, as someone who has cared, rescued, and cared for literally hundreds and hundreds of chickens over the course of the past 15 years. And I am here to tell you that the life of a single lion is in fact worth mourning and protesting on its own, uh, without any respectful references to other lives lost. We have a lot of cows. Cows, cows are so compassionate and kind and caring. And I think that I, I cannot imagine that any cow that I know, I try to imagine what any cow that I know would think if they knew that there were people here at this conference reporting to speak on behalf of farmed animals, and yet telling people to be less compassionate and caring towards non-farmed animals, or towards human concerns. I, I think they would not be able to make any sense at all of the idea that people According to represent their interests, we're encouraging people to become more cats to some other kind of suffering, to some other animal. Um, so um, I'm, I'm here to tell you that, but I'll get back to that. And the, 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 the other big thing that I'm here to tell you, uh, Vine stands for veganism is the next evolution. Um, but, oh, yeah. That's our legal name, but it also stands for veganism is not enough. <laughs> and, uh, and so I'm here to tell you, especially if you're new to the movement, that quiet as it's kept, not everybody believes that trying to convince individuals to be vegan is the best use of your time. I just want you to understand, that's a perfectly fine thing to do, but there are many people at this conference telling you it is the most important thing you should do, the only thing you could do, and, uh, oh, I'm sorry, there are so many other things uh, that we need people to do. Um, uh, and, 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 and so if you're new, I want you to think about where you might fit in. And if you're somebody here who is an all-time animal advocate, um, who works in vi against vivisection, or against fur, or against circuses, or against the uses of animals in entertainment, then I want you to know that I am here from a farmed animal sanctuary to tell you that I am deeply grateful for your work. <laughs> now, I say these things for two reasons. Because uh, I understand something about compassion, and because I understand something about the topic that's supposed to be the topic of my talk, which is speciesism. 
Compassion, what I know, is, and what cows know, is that compassion is not some finite little thing that you have to dole out very, very sparingly, uh, not expending it on this one because you need to save it for that one. Quite the contrary. Quite the contrary. Compassion, in fact, uh, your heart is a muscle that, be, like any other muscle, becomes more capable of uh, the more you exercise it. Um, and so extending compassion increases the quantity of compassion that you have to extend. Same thing. You know this is true, right? This is a love. We're talking about love here. The more you love, the more love you have. And I understand something about speciesism. Um, and that's what I'm supposed to talk to you about. So, <laughs> speciesism is uh, the, uh, the uh, discrimination against and exploitation against beings on the basis of species. The idea that, 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 that on account of species you might be bought and sold, you might be liable to be forced to work without compensation, you might be killed. You might be displaced from your home. You might be exploited in various ways. Yes? Uh, because of your species. And that's why we say speciesism. Some of you have been hearing about carnism. Carnism talks about some things that are aspects of speciesism, but it's much more narrow. Um, what I'm trying to say is we need to understand speciesism if we want to liberate animals. Um, speciesism uh, has a basic logic or a way of, of thinking about the world or being in the world. There are various species of logics. Uh, uh, some of the common ones are might makes right. Yeah, I can just do I want to do it. I can do it, so I will do it. Um, and uh, this excuses uh, or, or doesn't even bother to excuse much animal exploitation. And you know what? Folks who operate on that basis tend to do it much more broadly. We can all think of ways that people have hurt other groups of people or the environment um, on the basis of might makes right as well. Yes? Um, another way is God said so, right? God told me that I could kill you. God made you for me. God told me I could have this land. Yes? Uh, and again, you probably don't need me to tell you that, 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 that the same people who say God made the animals for us to eat have also told us that God told them to smite the homosexuals and, um, and, and take the land of these people because they're heathens. Yes? Okay, so God said so is another logic that is often used for speciesism. But probably most commonly these days are exceptionalism and ableism. Exceptionalism is the idea that the ones who are closest to me the ones who are most like me are the specialists. And we're so special that we can exploit everybody else. Um, the flip side of it is they're so inferior uh, that we may legitimately buy and sell them, we may legitimately enslave them, we may legitimately do whatever we want to them, etc. Yes? That's exceptionalism. <coughs> And then, um, and then there's this idea that human beings have some particular capability or capacity, like reason or whatever it might be, and because of that capability or capacity, they may rightfully exploit, enslave, displace, etc. Yes? Yes, and that is also known as ableism. So, that brings me to the, 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 the next point, which is that we can't actually understand speciesism in isolation. We have to understand speciesism in context, right? Uh, speciesism doesn't just exist as some separate thing uh, all on its own that we could just sort of pull out and, <coughs> and it's fixed. Speciesism is deeply embedded in ways of thinking about the world that also are all bound up with ways of thinking about other people and ways of thinking about the environment. Yes? Um, so, so, so this brings us to this idea that I think they thought was the new idea I will talk about today, intersectionality, except that, you know, it's from the 1980s. Um, <laughs> it's just that we were really late thinking about it. Um, so you may have heard this word and you may have even heard or used it uh, as, as though it were just sort of this uh, vague way of saying that people ought to pay attention to race. 
Um, and certainly, the idea that people ought to pay attention to race is, is part of intersectionality. Uh, but intersectionality is actually uh, it's, it's, it's a very powerful conceptual tool that's very simple, but also very deep. People have been working on it for decades. The basic idea is that different forms of oppression, racism, sexism, ableism, etc., uh, 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 don't exist separately, but in fact uh, uh, interact with one another. Uh, they, they, and it's not just that they use the same sort of mindsets and they tend to benefit the same sorts of people, um, or they use the same sorts of tactics, which is stereotyping. Um, it's, it's that they're deeply linked at the root. It's that they're deeply linked at the root. And they interact with one another in ways that support one another. Does this make sense? Yeah, I'm asking the whole room, right? As if I had time to explain it, if it didn't. Um, <laughs> I thought I might be book. Okay, so so, 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 the different forms of oppression interact with one another um, uh, 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 in ways that it's not possible to disaggregate them. What I'm trying to say here is, for example, that women of color experience forms of discrimination that are the result of the intersection of racism and sexism. And these are forms of oppression uh, that, that are not shared by white women or by men of color because they're a product of the interaction between racism and sexism. I hope that makes sense. Uh, the other piece is that the different forms of oppression not only interact with one another, but they support each other. Uh, and so if you sort of chip away at this one, but you don't pay attention to that one, that one's going to come and help the other one stay up. So actually, you need to look at this one too. Also, that they interact in ways that they form systems of oppression. Huh? Systems of oppression. And here's a really important point. And the idea is if you want to, if you want to dismantle the systems of oppression, then you've got to go to the intersections. And why that is, is I, I, I don't have a prop here, but if you've ever, if you think about a wooden table or a wooden chair and you would like to dismantle it, like you could just start banging it, right? Anywhere, but you'd be, you do actually a lot better at dismantling it if you go to the joints. You see what I'm saying? Because it's the joints that are, that are holding the structure together. Um, okay, so that's intersectionality. That's just one of the contexts that we need to understand. Species of the day is they have two minutes. I what? Okay, so, 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 so the other is ecology. Um, in ecology is a system of relationships, um, speciesism, every problem that we are trying to solve here occurs within systems of relationships, ecosystems, not only, but also ecologies. Economies, there we go. Economies, social systems, etc. If we try to solve the problem of speciesism without reference to those, we're going to fail. Look, animal activists too can get tripped up by speciesism if they don't pay attention to it. And I'm sorry to say that we, we do see this, it's not surprising. Um, when we act like we're the heroes of the animal rights movement, when we feel completely free to substitute our own opinions for things without actually having thought hard about what the non-human animals we purport to be speaking for would really like. That's speciesism. Um, when we suggest that you ought to give rights to this or that animal because they this or that capability, that's ableism. Might, it might be a strategy that you use here and there, but do you really want to walk around saying that, that, that people need to have certain capabilities? If they're going to get rights, I don't know. I think not. An over-reliance on logic. Part of speciesism is this idea that we're the superior animals because we're driven by our very big brains. Um, and, 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 and it's only animals who blah, blah, blah. Okay, so over-reliance on, on logic is another one. Oh, I'm just a, I have to skip all of the things. Um, <laughs> okay. I know you I know it's um, Okay, so 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 Check it out. I, I can't tell you all of the bad things, but please watch out for militarism. Please watch out for racism and sexism in the movement. Please think twice between thinking that we're going that commodity veganism is going to save us. Um, uh, uh,
by which I mean like we're going to consume our way to animal liberation. Um, uh, 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 the antidotes. Be an ally to animals. Don't see yourself as a leader of the animal liberation movement. You see yourself as an ally of animals who are pursuing their own liberation. Uh, you don't have to uh, 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 think strategically and go for those intersections. And then finally, another slogan that mine has is solidarity is for everybody. Um, solidarity is for everybody. Your heart really is a muscle. Uh, and expanding compassion not only to farmed animals, but also to like who've had their heads blown off, or black motorists who've had their heads blown off. Uh, will only make your heart stronger and only make you better able to work for animal liberation. Thank you very much. <laughs>